last episode, we actually built the foundation for our chat application. We built all the database models, we installed Devise, we used Devise Bootstrap um, and that gem in order to add usernames to log in with. But the next piece that we need is actually to build the layout of our page. So we want the sidebar to show the uh, channels that you have joined and then we want the main content of the page to be all the messages in that active channel. So we're gonna be building out the UI for that just on a basic level and then adding in the ability for you to join and leave channels. So if you join a channel, it should show up in the sidebar. If you leave a channel, it should remove it from the sidebar and that will give it a feel that's like IRC or Slack or any of those chat applications like that. So without further ado, let's get started. If we hop back into application.html.erb, we can actually add a container around the main content of the page around that yield. So if we add class container here, um, we're gonna do fluid container that way that we have the 12 columns, um, but this should be full width. So we'll have div class equals row, and we'll have our div class column small and we'll give it um, two columns for the left side and then we'll have class column small 10 which will be 10 columns for the other side so once we have all these divs in here we should see things move around a little bit and what we'll do is we'll put the chat room stuff on the left side um, once the users like signed in um, we'll display that stuff there so here we can just simply say if user signed in question mark we can say end and we'll have we'll have like an h5 or something called chat rooms and this will be all of the chat rooms that the user is connected to so we'll have the chat rooms here in the middle and we'll say let's call them general and let's make one called random and while we're at it let's also remove the app assets style sheets scaffold css because that conflicts with bootstrap a little bit um so we'll add these in and we'll have our chat rooms here but let's also display them on the left side so with this here we can say we're going to want to display current user dot chat rooms dot each do and we'll take the chat room and we'll display the chat room dot name on its own list item and we'll make it a link to for now with the chat room not really linked to anything so we'll just link to the uh, hash there just so that we can display these and we'll display that you should see those on the side and now we need to build the link to actually go join these so the link is really just going to create the association between the user and the chat room, that join table record, and we'll be off to the races. So what I'm gonna do here is go into our routes file, and um, the chat room is going to have a resources chat room users. And now this is actually the chat room users join table model, which we'll be interacting with directly. Um, and the reason for that is because this is going to be the easiest way to grab those by ID. So we'll be able to um, associate those by the ID instead of having to look them up every time. Um, but this should be pretty easy. So we can go into our app controllers, uh, chat room users controller.rb class chat room users controller application controller and here we're gonna want a create and we're going to want a destroy. And this is gonna be super duper simple. We'll have a before action set chat room. And so this will of course look up that chat room. Say set chat room at chat room equals chat room dot find params chat room ID because it's a nested route. And so this is gonna be really simple. We'll have a chat room user equals at chat room dot chat room users where user ID is current user dot ID. And we can also go up here and say before action authenticate user. So we always have a current user um, and this will be first or create. So we'll only allow 
one of these join table records per user per chat room. And that way, if we do the where and then we say first or create, it will look up the chat room ID, the user ID, and it will try and find that. And it will either grab the first one or it will create that record for us. And we can redirect to at chat room. So that will be super simple and our destroy can be very, very similar. And this will just be destroy all and we'll go to chat rooms path instead. So this will just say, well, if for some reason there happen to be multiple in there, we'll just destroy all of them just for the safety of that. So there should never be any more than one record. And if there ever was, we would just destroy all of them. Um, so you would never, if there was two records and you left and it deleted one, but not the other, then it would look like you left, but you were still in the channel and you'd be confused as a user. So this is just kind of a little safety net of the, uh, that situation in case you ever had that. Of course, you can also set your validations on the join table and uh, index at a database level, uh, unique index across those two columns. So you could never even insert those records as well. So how you wanna go about that, um, you can either go this route, uh, you can also do that. You can go kind of a mixture, you can approach that in a couple ways. Um, just for the safety uh, quickness of this example, we're gonna do it this way, but I would recommend the database index indexes indices for unique across two columns um, for the safety of your data uh, anyways. So we'll go to the chat rooms index and this just really needs a link in here to say link to join chat room uh, chat room users path chat room and this should be a method post and the reason for that is we want to hit the create action and so if you click join here um, and we might also need uh, of course to not use that instance variable so now you should be able to click join here and you see that general shows up in the left side which is awesome it's very very good um, works exactly as we would expect. And then we should also be able to go into our, um, now we can do this a couple ways actually. We could put an X on the chat rooms on the left side or we could also replace this join with a leave function. Um, and so I'm gonna just make a leave action here for simplicity's sake, but that is, um, we'll, we'll be able to make that link and move it around when we have like icons so we could put a pretty looking X on the left side or whatever so that it, it shows up visually a little bit more nicely. So we'll do that later, but for now we're just gonna put a leave link in here. Um, and the leave is really simple, it's leave chat room. And this post is going to get changed to a delete. And so you should be able to leave general and uh, chat room, chat room users, and this, this accidentally crashed uh, as you saw because my routes were configured incorrectly. So what we want here is actually resource as a singular route because this is the chat room user record just for yourself. So the create and the destroy actions are not actually scoped to an individual records or the destroy isn't. Um, and really we shouldn't care about, you should never be able to create and assign someone else to a channel for you. So the reason why we want to change this back to um, resource as a singular one is that this should control your um, connection to and from that chat room by itself. So think of this controller as specifically for the current user and it really determines whether or not the user is joining or leaving that chat room. So it's nested, but it only really does joining and leaving, and that's really it. So this uh, resource is a little bit different than what you might be normally used to, but it allows us for moving all of that join and leave functionality into two actions in its own controller. It can be customized on its own and it just kind of works independently of the chat rooms themselves, which I think is really nice. So if we refresh, we should now be able to join general. We can go back and we should also be able to leave general. We can click leave 
on random, but it's not going to do anything. We should be able to join both of these, um, and we can. We can leave random, we can leave general, and if we try to leave any of the chat rooms that uh, we're not already in, it doesn't crash. And that's kind of the benefit of uh, the controllers for the chat rooms users controller that we did. So the destroy all will just destroy it all, but if there's no records found, it will just not crash. So it's kind of a nicety of this approach. If you do a find and destroy and that, if it didn't find anything, it's gonna crash. Um, so this kind of eases over those uh, exceptions or those errors that would have come up and you can kind of take care of it just by modifying your active record query a little bit differently. So if that's useful to you, if that's a little tip that you might be able to use in other places. Um, it's just a habit I've gotten into because it allows for kind of a seamless experience if for some reason a user tries to leave a channel that they're not in already. The app doesn't crash where it normally would have uh, previously in different approaches of coding that. Now where we're at is that we have Bootstrap set up, we have our users, we have our channels, we have the ability to join and leave channels, but we don't have anything for the channels themselves. So if you go click on a channel, you don't get to see any of the messages, it doesn't really feel like a chat app yet, but we're making progress. And so this is where I'm gonna leave this episode off and we'll dive into actually building out the message functionality in the next episode. So this is it for now. And next piece, we'll dive into setting up the messages and then we'll start connecting action cable in order to make that stuff real time. So that's it for now. I will talk to you in the next one. Peace.